Well, I want to welcome you as we continue on in our series on the Ten Commandments. Now, we've recently gone back to our individual classes, but I still want to make these videos for those of you who are not able to attend. They won't be as long as the recorded sessions in the tabernacle. They should be shorter. So just wanted to make you aware we're going to continue these videos every Monday to cover the lesson of the week. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you would be with us as we open up your word. God, that you would speak to us. And God, that um, you would be glorified in all that is said and done. We love you, thank you, and praise you. And we ask this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we are on our ninth of the Ten Commandments, which is, you shall not bear false witness. Now, basically, a way of sum um, summarizing this would be saying, um, thou shalt not lie. Um, but bearing false witness actually had to do with the judicial system back in biblical times. You see, in ancient times, the judicial system was a lot different than it is today. In fact, people were presumed guilty until proven innocent. And they didn't obviously have forensic science, GPSs, all those kinds of ways to collect evidence. And so everything was usually based on witnesses and their testimonies. And usually it would only take one testimony for somebody to be condemned to death or a crime. Um, but that's not the way God's law reads. Actually, when you do a study of the Old Testament law, God always required two witnesses to um, establish a matter. And it would be taken before a group of elders who would then do an investigation. And in fact, those two people who were testifying, if it was a capital crime, if it was a crime where somebody would be executed, they did that by a stoning, they would throw stones. And the two witnesses would be the first people that would throw the stones. So there was a big weight to their witness. It was, they wanted, um, God wanted them to see that what they had to say should be true. And they had to really think, did I see what I saw? Um, Cause I'm going to be taking this person's life. Because you see, as you read through the Old Testament and as you read through the whole Bible, actually, you see that God is very concerned about justice. And so when we lie, it's an injustice. Now, we live in a world where lying seems very convenient. It happens a lot. In fact, there's a whole industry called advertising that most of the time is based on lying, where they try to sell you one thing um, by saying it's going to do all these different things, when in reality, when you get the product, it's not quite like it was originally um, advertised or it doesn't quite work the exact same way. And many people think, well, lying's not that big of a deal. It's not like murder or adultery or stealing. What's interesting is God included lying within the Ten Commandments. So it is something that is obviously important to him. And why would this be? It's because God is a God of truth. There's no falsehood in God. Um, lies come from Satan. In fact, the Bible tells us that he is the father of lies. So God stands for truth and wants us to stand with truth. And he doesn't want any type of lying to be evident in our life. So as you look at the world, there's many things that they try to lie to us about. There's many lies out there. In fact, it doesn't take long for one to go on social media and realize how much lying has infiltrated our culture. People lie because it's convenient. Um, at least it's convenient for a season because as you know, I think as everyone knows, that once you tell a lie, to maintain that lie, you usually end up telling many more lies. And then you create this web of lies and then you usually get trapped in it. So lying seems convenient, but in reality it's not. But we think that it is. And so what is the answer? Is this, God obviously doesn't want us to lie. It's an offense to him. And there's many types of ways that we can lie. It's not just saying um, something that's completely untrue. Sometimes it's through gossip. Gossip is lying. You know, even if the gossip may be true, are the things that are saying, are they to edify? Are they to encourage? Of course not. They're to tear somebody down. And the Bible makes it very clear that the words of our mouth should be edifying to others. And in fact, gossip, there's um, three people that gossip hurts. The person telling the gossip, the person that the gossip is being told about, and even the person listening to the gossip. And so all that's one way that lies can infiltrate our lives. But I think there's one interesting way that Jesus directly addresses in Matthew. And in fact, if you open up to Matthew 23, 
we're going to look at Matthew 23, and we're going to start in verse 25. We're just going to read just a few verses here. And Jesus is addressing the Pharisees and the scribes, and he has some very strong language for them. And let's look at that. So Matthew 23, starting in verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Jesus is calling hypocrites liars. In this case, he's calling the Pharisees and scribes hypocrites. And a hypocrite is obviously somebody that says one thing and does another. That's lying. If we say that we are one way with our mouth and that we're gonna act one way with our mouth, but then on the other hand, we act completely different, then we are lying. We are liars. And that is something that Jesus wanted to directly address. What's interesting is that usually the most religious people are the ones that are the hypocrites. You'll notice in that passage that it's the Pharisees and the scribes, people that were looked up to in that day as being very religious. But Jesus is saying that it's not about how you look on the outside, but how consistent you are with your life. And let's face it, sometimes the, the most lying hour, if you will, is Sunday morning worship. When people come to church and they put on um, nice clothes, and they smile big, and they act one way, and then afterwards, they act completely different throughout the remainder of the day and throughout the remainder of the week. Or they act like everything's all right when it's really not in their heart or in their soul. And so being a hypocrite is another form of lying that we need to make sure that does not enter into our lives. We need to be consistent with our words and with our actions and make sure that the things that we're saying we're backing up with our actions. If we can't back it up with our actions, we have no right of saying it. But with all the other Ten Commandments, we've looked at almost the flip side of them. For instance, when it came to thou shalt not kill and murder, it had dealt with anger and hatred. Well, it's not just that we're supposed to not hate or not be angry, it's that we're supposed to love. So it's not just don't do this, but do this instead. Now we're told not to lie. So therefore we should obviously not lie. But what the, what's the flip side of this commandment? And the answer to that is found in Ephesians chapter four. So we're gonna go to Ephesians chapter four and we're gonna see what the apostle Paul has to say. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, Paul says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So Paul says, put away lying and put on truth. So we are to not lie, we are to speak the truth. Now this does not just mean that we're just supposed to be factually accurate in everything that we say. I think it goes deeper than that. Because what is truth? It's a question that Pilate asked Jesus. What is truth? Well, we know that God's word is truth. Therefore, instead of saying lies, saying lies about other people, saying lies to people, we should speak truth. We should say the things that God would have us to say. We should remind people of who he is and what his word says. That's the communication that should be coming out of our mouths. So sometimes that means that we have to confront people and tell them the truth even though it might not be convenient or the easiest thing to do. Other times it means that we need to go alongside somebody else and say, listen, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that God loves you. And I do know that God has a plan or a purpose even though I can't see it. We need to share that truth. So you see, it's not just about being um, truth, not just being about lying and saying lies. Yes, we don't need to do that. We don't need to let deceit enter into our hearts or into our mouths, or into our interactions with other people. But more important, not more importantly, but alongside that, we also need to speak truth into other people's lives. We need to be truthful in the way that we speak, but also in the way that we act. So I wanna challenge you that as you hear this commandment about not lying, yes, don't lie, but also think, how can I speak truth into someone else's life? Who can God bring into my life today the upcoming hours of this day,
that I can speak truth to, whether it be encouragement, whether it's sharing the gospel, however it may be, I want to challenge you with telling the truth and speaking the truth in love. And that's very important. We need to speak the truth in love. Jesus did just that. Even though he always spoke truth, he did it in a loving, kind, graceful way. He was confrontational when he needed to. But when he um, interacted with people and told them the truth, he always did so with love. So I challenge you in that way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that we be people of truth. I pray, Lord, that we would not have lies or deceit fill our hearts and fill our mouths, but instead we'd be truthful, that we would know your word and know your truth and share that truth with other people. I pray, Lord, that we'd be people of integrity and that our mouth and our words would line up with our actions and our feet and where we go and how we use our hands. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, next week, we are going to be covering the last of the Ten Commandments, coveting. And I look forward to seeing you. I hope you'll join us for that lesson. And we'll see you next week.